Hello everybody, Chris Samardage, Brotherhood of Light Show, current YouTube channel. And this week we're going to continue with our 70s and 80s rock concerts. And uh, my friend Dale Roberts asked me to do a show of an event I went to. So let's get on with the show. Okay, so this is it. The US Festival in 1982. Steve Wozniak, Steve Wozniak's Rock Festival. Okay, so here is kind of the poster for it right here on the left. And uh, here is the three-day, it was a three-day festival and the three-day advertisements. And uh, you can see who's on it right here, but there's also added attractions, which we'll get to into the show here. And uh, we're going to try to tell the story of Steve Wozniak. Okay, so we're going to just hit the title here. So his concept for this rock festival is Unite Us in Song. Okay, so they end up calling themselves Unison. Unison is the name of the corporation that puts on the concert that Wozniak financed. Okay, just let's get that straight. Okay, Steve Wozniak is one of the co-founders of Apple Computer, probably the genius behind the concept of making a personal computer and selling them and making, by 1981 is when he gets the idea to do this festival, making millions of dollars, okay, and continuing with some great products after that. Uh, and there he is with Steve Jobs and Wozniak with one of his first computers there in the photo. So uh, Wozniak is driving in his car in the Bay Area and he hears this radio station called KFAT and they're basically playing country rock music and he's really inspired by that music, that Americana music. So he decides to put on, with all this money, he just had a recent divorce, he's got all kinds of money and he decides to put on a Woodstock-like concert with Americana music. So that is basically the story. Uh, now, what happens is he ends up uh, getting a hold of Dr. Peter Ellis and John, attorney John Collins, and he calls these guys up. I guess they're like hip doctors and lawyers from the Silicon Valley area, and uh, they come up and meet with Wozniak and... Uh, he pitches them this idea for the concert and they say, yeah, we'll go, we'll do it for you, you know? And, uh, so he goes out to his car, he comes back with a check for $2 million and goes, all right, guys, go for it. So that was probably mid 1981. So that's an incredible story. So we'll get to the next slide. So at this point, uh, Peter, the president of, Unison, which to me sounds like a sleeping pill uh, medicine. Uh, anyway, they look for a location and they want to do it in California and they find this Glen Helen Regional Park in San Bernardino and here's pictures of it on the left. And uh, at that point, they've now secured this place and they've got it, you know, this big location and it's like 3,000 acres and it's got this huge open area to put on a concert and uh, you know it's got some facilities and it's in a great location in between the 215 and the 15 and the 10 there are freeways that cross near it so it's a lot of access by road so uh, they end up hiring Bill Graham Presents which is the Bay Area rock concert promoter Northern California company and uh, they end up hire, um, hiring Bill's crew, and uh, one of the main booking agents is Craig Perloff, and uh, the person who writes the checks is Sherry Wasserman. So they end up they end up going down there, uh, I'm sure, with Bill and looking at this site and saying. Well, you got to make natural amphitheater out of this. You got to cut down all these trees, move these boulders, put roads in here, off ramps, blah 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 blah. And they leave. So they come back about a month or two later, and Wozniak has completely 
graded the mountain down and created a giant bowl and uh, put roads in and plumbing and water. He spent like $10 million. I don't know if he ran electricity in there, but he probably did. Uh, you know, put underground water so that the rock concert people could have fountains all the way around. Uh, they also put in a plumbing system for uh, for showers so people could take cooling off showers in the heat of the desert in Southern California. And so uh, it ends up, as you can see this picture in the lower right, after it, and they plant lawn, ends up looking like this. Now this picture is the current amphitheater in Glen Helen which holds about 70,000 people, but you, it, they're still using part of the amphitheater that Wozniak built back in 1981-82. Uh, so here is the artist rendition of the amphitheater, and you can see how the mountains came down and they just carved this thing out and flattened it and it slopes uphill. And this is built to hold 300,000 people. Now the lake to the right and the forest are already the existing park that were there. And they kind of kept that the same, except they built a road that came directly into behind the stage. And uh, so they did it right, you know, the, and the Bill Graham people were pretty blown away that Wozniak was to create the ultimate rock concert venue in uh, North America. So my story, um, I owned a t-shirt company in Lake Tahoe and I used to make t-shirts for all the local restaurants and ski resorts and stuff like that. And then uh, at a printing factory and I did all the artwork myself. And I ended up, uh, I would make Grateful Dead shirts and sell them. And this was previous to the people doing it like crazy. Uh, Hardly anybody did it, and we would we would so we made like fifty Grateful Dead shirts, uh, specifically for the US Festival Grateful Dead concert because they're going to play there. And uh, what we do is we drive drove down there on Thursday. It was a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday Memorial Day weekend in September, and we drove down there that night on Thursday. We could, you know filled up the van with supplies. And we were one of the first people at the camp out there. And we camped out behind the mountain in this picture. And so we're sitting there, you know, kind of waiting to go to sleep. And we see these, all these like uh, spotlights, like, I don't know if you've ever seen like when a used car or a car dealer has a, you know, blowout sale, they'll get the spotlight and they'll put it in front of them. like three spotlights that spiral around and shoot up into the air and you can see them for miles around. Well, they... These guys had like six or eight of those things and they're just shooting up in the air. And so we, and we saw this, uh, fire trail. So we hiked up to the top of this mountain on the top of the picture here. And, uh, our campground was right on the other side. And we looked down and we saw this just pristine amphitheater. And it was just amazing. Let me get to the next shot. So we basically looked down and saw these spotlights, the stage lighting, the spotlights on the spotlight towers. Uh, all they're just rehearsing to make sure everything's working. They got the video walls, giant video screens. I mean, I'm a concert goer. I've been a concert goer since uh, 1965. And uh, I used to go to a lot of concerts that Bill Graham put on in San Francisco, Day on the Green in Oakland. And this was like a concert goer's dream to see this thing. It was just made to order, uh, you know, pristine. And it was never going to look that way because the next morning there was going to be, you know, 100,000 people out there uh, and bands playing. And it was going to change, uh, you know, get all torn up. But uh, it was just really an amazing sight. And I wish I would have brought my camera because it was just so cool. So here we are. It's Friday morning, opening day. There's Bill Graham and Wozniak doing a press conference. Bill Graham's the promoter on the left of the microphones. Wozniak's the guy laying back. And you kind of see that Bill is like really intense and Wozniak is just super nonchalant. Super nice guy. I met him at Shoreline at a Grateful Dead concert backstage. He's super, talked to him about electric cars. He's a super cool guy, man just a wonderful guy now here he is up on the top left and he's 
you know, really proud of his event. He's, you know, built this amphitheater and spent millions of dollars. And then there he is back probably in 68 or 69 with Steve Jobs when they were first building their first computers. You can see he's a true hippie. And then this shot on the right, uh, we walked in and we went to the first day and that's what it looked like uh, with the two big screens and the giant rainbow walls with the uh, jumbotron. And, uh, you know, it wasn't really packed because it was a Friday. I'd say there was maybe 100,000 people there the first day. Uh, okay, so we're going to get on to the next day. So, correction, here it is. The day one of the US Festival. Now the festival's happening. And this is my perspective. So the uh, bill was the police, the talking heads, the B-52s, Oingo Boingo, English Beats, the Ramones, and Gang of Four. Now, I got into the festival early. I saw every one of these acts. I sat through every one of them. And uh, it was like 105 degrees. I'm not kidding. And uh, the one thing uh, that we didn't do was we didn't drink any beer. There's beer gardens. We did not drink. It was just too hot to drink. Uh, we just drank water. And so the the top group is the Ramones. They're, they're playing in front of a large crowd. Then Oingo Boingo. Uh, so the Ramones were great. I got luckily to see them at their height. They're, you know, they just rocked it. Uh, Oingo Boingo is very bizarre. Down on the bottom left is B-52s, and they were the first band to play in the evening, and they were just eclectic and weird and great, and it was before Love Shack and before they were like a commercial success. So they were just really great raw. And then uh, uh, Talking Heads with Dave Byrne, they're playing the uh, Les Paul, and there is a whole montage of the Talking Heads, and they just kicked ass. Uh, they were also at the height of their like, you know, 1982 version of the band. So at this point, we're experimenting with a little bit of fungus and uh, the police come on and they're the headliners and they just absolutely killed it. They were unbelievable. Um, these giant video walls. I mean, they're like 50 by 60 feet video screens. And we were sort of standing right in front of one of those, kind of looking to the left to the stage where the band was playing. And it was like, you know, these giant videos and they were just, the video director was like, you know, in the drum fill or the guitar solo or the singer. He was just hitting every cue. I mean, it was amazing. And they were just, I'm going to have the set list next now. Uh, I thought they stole the show and there is a DVD. I don't know if it's available used or new, but there it is, the US Festival. And we're gonna get to the set list next. So here's the set list for you police fans. And uh, there's the tickets, third, fourth, and fifth. I believe I had this ticket over here on the left. It was a one ticket for all three days. And uh, that was the ticket I bought. and. Uh, so there's the set list for the police. You can read it for yourself. They played a really like a two hour set and uh, they jammed out really hard and they did all these great hits and it was Ghost and Machine Tour. And I had seen them earlier uh, about six months before, but they were way better in this thing. They were just at the top of their game. I, I, and then the, uh, the following album a year later, I've seen a video on that, which is really good. But I, I thought this was the best performance in if you're a police fan, I would buy this DVD. In fact, I'm going to try to get it uh, if possible because it was just such a great performance if you're into collecting live music. So we're going to go on to the following uh, next day. Okay, so here we are, the next day. Now you can see, you can see the giant video screens and you can see that there's... 150,000 people there now. It's Saturday, and it's a lot more people, and it's like 115 degrees. I'm not kidding. It was even hotter. And the, here's the bill. Now, this is the classic rock day. That was kind of the new wave punk day. 
uh, Tom Petty, Pat Benatar, The Kinks, The Cars, Santana, Eddie Money, Dave Edmonds. Now, uh, we stayed up after the police in our camp and kind of had a few beers at that point. And uh, I slept in. I missed Dave Edmonds. I think I came in about halfway through Eddie Money, but I'd seen Eddie Money many times before opening up because he was a Bill Graham act. Uh, and then The Cars... No, Santana played. They were excellent. Saw their whole show. They were great. And uh, that's also on YouTube if you want to check out that video. Now, the other thing is uh, I got a lot of this information from uh, Amplified Music and uh, Popular Culture Documentary. That's the name of the company that did the 82 Us Festival documentary. So I got a lot of this kind of you know, Craig pull up Bill Graham stories from them. Anyway, the cars played, and there they are on the left playing above the liner, lineup, and uh, they just were a weird mix for like a 115 degree desert setting like this. I, I just didn't think they worked particularly well. They sounded great, they're the cars, but I just didn't think they had the impact. Now, uh, Wozniak had built... Uh, you see this shower people are taking showers up on the left and it was so hot you were just like wearing a pair of shorts and i had a, i had my camera and stuff but uh my buddy would stand out with the camera and i would go in the shower and stand there for 20 minutes and cool off so so i think during eddie money i went in the shower uh and then you know had kind of a fresh start on santana and then the cars and uh these were two showers on either side of the stage off you know, an eighth of a mile away, and they were the size of basketball courts. I mean, that each one, there was like, you know, you could fit like 500 people in them at once. It was pretty incredible. Um, and the water, I think, was sort of constantly going, um, kind of misting. Uh, so that was great, because with that kind of temperature, you needed to cool off. They were hand, There was water fountains everywhere. They were spraying water on the crowd. So it was really great that they they kind of took care of took care of the audience really well it wasn't like Woodstock where you know who knows what they had if they even had water there okay so here's the follow-up day you can see up in the upper left there's 150,000 people easy you went all the way up past the delay towers the crowd you can see Santana playing and uh then the cars down on the bottom. And then the kinks played when it got just getting dark. And I the first time I'd ever seen the kinks, and you know, they were a band from the 60s, uh, almost as original as the Beatles and Stones from that era. Uh, but I thought they were kind of raunchy. I thought they were kind of punk rock, man. It was like, they were not like a clean sounding band. They were like, you know, they were raunchy, but they were the kinks, man, with all those hits. They were great. And then the headliner was Tom Petty, and uh, he was really good. Uh, I was a little bit tired for his set, but I made it all the way through. But I'm going to get to the next band who I thought was stole the show. And that band was Pat Benatar. And there's also a DVD available, and there's her set list if you can read it. And uh, there they are on stage on the left, and there she is on the right, and there her and her husband are, and uh, I think this is more current picture, but uh, he was great on guitar, man. He just ripped, and the drummer was incredible, and she just was at the height of her career and just sang her ass off. I mean, she. this is another one. If you want to get this DVD of Pat Benatar, for you Pat Benatar fans, I mean, this is the one. I mean, she just stole that show Saturday I mean she was fantastic so I feel really lucky to see Pat and her husband and their band at their height it was really great so now uh, Tom Petty played he closed the show out and uh, went back to the camp and uh, you know that night you know that's when we would had we had beer in a cooler and we you know drink and carry on and partake in some other things and uh you know, uh, that's when we partied because it was so hot and grueling out there that the party was after the show, not during. 
So all events don't go on without some kind of conflict. And uh, first of all, the shot here above me is the festival with 150,000 people. You can see the screens. You can see the giant amphitheater that he made. You can see the old park and then uh, back the freeway behind the park. And uh, you can see where all the trucks drive in to load the equipment and uh, and the delay towers. It was just an incredible event. Looking at all the porta potties and the beer gardens up top and the water faucets. You can see the water running down the hill, uh, draining through the lawn. And uh, now on this left, you see the stage. Now, a lot of these big concerts, what they'll do is they'll put a rotating platform and they'll have the band playing the drums and the guitars and everything set up on that and they'll play on that and then they'll s rotate it around and they'll have another band set up but this one they were just loading everything in and out off the stage left side off these big ramps and you had uh, bill graham and his crew and they were like a military operation and bill graham was like a drill sergeant or a ramrod who just ran this thing like a you know like a machine and then, of course, you got Steve Wozniak. There's Bill on the left and Steve Wozniak on the right. And he is uh, just Mr. Carefree, nice guy, Mr. Wonderful, who's foot the, you know, $20 million bill to put on this concert or whatever. And uh, he ends up, uh, he in, has 100 guests, okay? He's, he's allowed 100 guests. They, and on this, the view that you can see here, they built this huge platform on this side of the stage where they had like the bleachers for a hundred guests. And that was the kind of designated area for Wozniak. But it was also mixed with this huge backstage area where a lot of the band members would, you know, be preparing to go out on stage and play. So you had a mix of you know, well, so what Wozniak does is he invites all his employees from Apple and all his friends, okay? Now, so you got a clash of two cultures. You've got all these militaristic stagehand union loader guys, you know, Teamsters and Bill Graham cracking the whip on them. And then, and then you've got Steve Wozniak and all these Apple computer nerds that are, you know, have no clue how to act backstage at a rock concert. And on top of that, he Wozniak goes into his little computer room and prints out another hundred passes for all his guests with their name on it and gives them the golden circle pass because he's he's got the technology to be able to make to make desktop printing, you know, because that's his specialty with computers. And then he laminates them and gives them out and then Bill Graham's freaking out and they put some special codes on it and he laminates and bootlegs that. And he's, it's a game for him, and Bill Graham is just freaking out, screaming and yelling. And it's just a total clash of cultures between the two guys. And I know that Saturday uh, was the day this all came to a head. And uh, Bill was so pissed off, he, he started to lose his voice. But we're going to go to Sunday next. So then we had, you know, partied Saturday night had to get up at 8.30 to make the 9 o'clock Grateful Dead set. They breakfast with the dead. And they, I remember walking in here in Shakedown Street, and they were just great. I loved their set. Was They were really good. This was really the peak of the dead back then, uh, before Jerry had any health issues. And uh, they were just really great, really fantastic. And then uh, the rest of the bill was Jackson Brown. Well, it was up. Grateful Dead, Jerry Jeff Walker, Jimmy Buffett, Jackson Brown, and Fleetwood Mac. So that was the Sunday Sunday day afternoon show. Started at 9 with the Dead. Now I saw the whole two-hour Dead set or however long it was. And then I went into the shower for Jerry Jeff Walker because, you know, you kind of have to get cooled off and cleaned up. And then uh, Jimmy Buffett was... I don't think he was as cliche at that point as he is now, but uh, he was really good. I liked him there, country rock. I think this was really the day that uh, Wozniak kind of imagined this country rock flavored music, Jackson Brown, uh, you know, being a Southern California country rocker, and then Fleetwood Mac with their own brand. Now I, and then I, so the Dead and Fleetwood Mac literally stole the show. They were great. 
So, uh, there's Bill and Wozniak and Mickey Hart doing a press conference when they were getting along. And here they are on Sunday. And there's Wozniak over there with Stevie Nicks hugging on her. And, uh, and there's Bill mugging for the shot. And he looks a little bit hesitant. Uh, but he's still getting in the picture. And uh, there's uh, Lindsey Buckingham. And then, of course, there's a audio. Uh, Fleetwood Mac live at the US Festival. Dreams at the festival. And it's audio. It's a CD that I guess you can buy um, on the internet. And then there is Wozniak and Stevie Nicks saying goodbye. And they played Up Until the Night. And they were really good. And if you watch the documentary that I got some of this information from, uh, they really sound good on that. On the, They do the song, The Chain, and it's, it's, it's really good. So that documentary, Amplified Music, Pop Culture Documentaries, check it out, Us Festival 82. It's an hour and 40 minutes, so just warning. Let's get to the next shot. So here is where it was located in San Bernardino, California. And here is an aerial shot of what it looks like now. So the Glen Alpine, Glen Helen Amphitheater is in the, basically the stage is in the middle of the amphitheater that Wozniak built. And if you look down, this is big kind of half circle green area. And uh, where the on the picture on the right top corner you can see how the screens are right up against that forest that and that lake so basically the amphitheater was about three times the size of the one they have now the whole green area in this picture was the us festival amphitheater and uh, it was built for 300,000 people now that holds about 75,000 and they still used a good portion of it, uh, as you can see in this aerial photograph. And then, of course, the top right picture is the actual US Festival on like Saturday. And so here is uh, two comparison shots. Um, so the one on the right, lower right, is the US Festival. And I believe this was from the 83. There's probably 250,000 people there. That amphitheater is almost full. And there is the Glen Ellen uh, amphitheater now up on the top. And that would be smack dab in the middle of this other amphitheater. But you can sort of see what, what they've done with it now made it more reasonable. And I've done a show there with the Allman Brothers and it was really nice. And here it is on the left. Uh, you can see the they're still using that lawn and you can see the, the lakes way off in the back and the woods are way off in the back there's all the load ins and stuff like that are there and then here is the actual us festival on probably saturday or sunday and it looks like sunday because it's clear and there is the big video screen on the right and uh, you can see the video screen is bigger than the stage itself the area and uh, so there's a comparison of the US Festival versus the Glen Ellen Amphitheater now and then. So uh, it's really amazing. We're going to do a recap of the US Festival history. So uh, there's the original one uh, poster on the left uh, with some photos and police talking as BT or Boingo Boingo, English Beat, Ramones, Tom Petty, Pat Benatar, Kinks, Cars, Santana, Eddie Money, Dave Edmonds, Fleetwood Mac, Jackson Brown, Jimmy Buffett, Jerry Jeff Walker, Grateful Dead. So really the highlights of this show are The Police, The Ramones, The Talking Heads, Tom Petty, The Kinks, Santana, and Pat Benatar. I don't know what she's doing here, but that's just a list I found. And then Fleetwood Mac and Grateful Dead were, to me, the standout acts on Sunday then the following year the cars I mean the clash and men at work and then we had and we had that was kind of like the punk day and then the heavy metal day they called it uh, might have coined the phrase at that point or at least cemented it in history 
Van Halen, Scorpions, Judas Priest, Ozzy Osbourne, and Motley Crue. So that's a pretty heavy show. And then we have David Bowie, who was going off the Let's Dance album, and he was just on top of the world. And I think Stevie Ray Vaughan was playing guitar for him at that particular show. And then U2, and then The Pretenders. So that was kind of the new wave, alternative day. So that was pretty amazing. So basically, I'm going to sign off. And I hope you guys enjoyed this thing because uh, I went to that festival. I went and I saw, I was 95% of the acts. I sat through and went to it and I, I sold all my Grateful Dead shirts and made enough money to, you know, for beer and gas and food and tickets. So, uh, you know, it was a successful, enjoyable weekend for me. And uh, it was great getting there early. And, uh, you know, I spent five days at the US Festival. And uh, it was great, Steve Wozniak. What a great event he put on. So I'm signing off. <laughs>